reading this title, you might ask rightly, what do authenticity, reflection, history, and crisis have in common? The answer is very simple, professionalism. In this talk, I will present you the professionalism of an authentic Latin scholar of the 18th century who contributed to overcoming a didactical crisis. Many of you might know this quotation. It is from Cicero Stephinibus. As long as you are young, children are to be imbued with the arts. Of course, he refers to which we call today humanities and science and to be influenced. After absorbing them, the student would be prepared much better to accomplish his task. This quotation is not only from Cicero's philosophical work dealing with the question of the highest good, but also from a Christomathy of the 18th century that is by Johann Matthias Gessner. Basically, this is an anthology, a collection of 111 excerpts of Ciceronian works, especially of his famous speeches. When he published his Christomathia Cicerooniana, Gesner was only 26 years old. He had just graduated in philosophy and theology in 1714 in Jena. In 1715, he had already published his first pedagogical work, the Institutionis Rei Scholasticae, which deal with the ideal teacher. At this point of his lifetime, he was appointed a vice principal of the Latin school in Weimar. And this was only when he started making his career, as we will see in the course of his talk. We will also see the relevance of the Ciceronian quotation we began with because he fully committed himself to the humanities, especially to Latin language and literature and this process had ev evidently started already when he himself still went to high school. However, you should briefly understand why a PhD in the third year gives a short insight only into his lifetime. In this talk, I will not present important dates of his career, as already happened so many times before in previous research, which seems exclusively to celebrate Gesner as a kind of pedagogical ancestor. Instead, I will try to characterize him in terms of his professional personality. What do I aim at? To put it into a nutshell, my thesis deals with the crisis of the Latin didactics in the 18th century and with potential ways to overcome it, particularly I focus on Latin reading comprehension and language acquisition from Gesner's point of view. That's why it makes sense to fathom all the factors which contributed to an improvement of Latin teaching. These aspects will thus be analyzed throughout my thesis, concentrating on Gesner's professionalism, which must be understood on the theoretical basis of educational science. So here you can see two important results. There's a strong agreement on the efficiency of professionalism and a professional teaching personality on a widely acknowledged model which grasps the so-called core reflection. Usually this kind of reflection happens in the course of a teacher training between a supervisor and the teacher trainees. In my thesis, I will thus be the supervisor asking questions to Gesner which reveal his reflective competences. It can be assumed that he wanted to improve the teaching practice, his lifelong learning, his striving for maiora. How can we define his maiora and understand them against the background of his professional per personality? To answer this, it will be worth adapting the model of core reflection so that the thorough analysis of Gesner's works can reply to these questions. First, Gesner believes that Latin didactics are in a crisis because of the so-called psittachismus and stupor pedagogicus, which means a parrot-like learning by heart of grammar rules and rhetorically beautiful sentences without understanding the argument itself. 
Furthermore, he harshly criticizes the so-called Lectio Stataria, which means a hyper-extensive commentation and giving excessive details about anything which could bore a relation to a certain word somehow. Second, what was his ideal, his motivation? Third, to what extent was he aware of his possibilities? What are his competences regarding learning theories? Four, how did he want to realize these ideals, especially by using which methods? Because of previous research results concerning his methods, I will exchange the order a bit. That is, I will exchange 3b with 4, assuming that the order of the reconstruction of his core reflection is irrelevant. Fifth, it is unfortunately not possible to identify to what extent he himself applied his didactical ideas in his Latin classes. Nonetheless, we can suspect him to have experimented with them on the basis of which he tells us himself. In addition, he probably promoted his ideas by participating in a so-called professional learning community, which is represented in a social network of various scholars. Today, first of all, I will explain the educational theories concerning the role of an authentic personality in a professional instructor. After this, I will analyze corresponding passages of the Gesnerian works, which refer to his experiences in his place of birth, Ansbach, where he started flourishing. In particular, his lecture delivered in Göttingen at the end of his lifetime, which was published twice, also posthumously, furnish a majority of his authentic experiences. The question rises to what extent we can deduce his professional personality from anecdotes and personal tellings in Göttingen, briefly, any past experience he tells us at a later point of his lifetime with his students or other scholars. As a matter of evidence, we can just suspect his character and personality, but at least we will have created a certain image of his personality which he had formed with his students beforehand because a professional personality is formed by experiences and reflection. Taking the results of educational science about the personality of a professional instructor into consideration, which means that he continued learning and developed himself along his life, and that he will always seek to solve problems and overcome crises, we can presume that a teaching behavior which promotes relations, encourages learning processes, and which is authentic at the same time, is sufficient only if the pedagogical attitude is firm and in alignment with the teacher's personality. Furthermore, biographical research is relevant for the personal development, which does not consider only new information, but which also updates old information from his experience. The biographical storytelling is therefore useful in the pedagogical average day because it enables communicative exchange and learning procedures which allow us to understand each other, especially because unknown things are associated with which we already know. Since the personality of a professional teacher requires authenticity, which is shaped by experiences, the anecdotes which tell us Gessner's experiences ensure his authenticity and are thus part of his professionalism. If Gessner conceives the problem of Latin didactics in the 18th century as a crisis, and this is which will be proved as well, this means that the professional personality often due to an academic qualification, is able to contribute to overcome a crisis. To what extent was Gesner professional? To what extent did he apply the core reflections? And in this talk, how can we grasp the professionalism in his life in the beginning of his career, analyzing his experiences? Let's have a look at his birthplace, Ansbach, where he was born in 1691 and went to high school. You find his place right here. Here he adapted the curiositas quoted in the beginning and learned to love ancient literature, especially thanks to his teacher Köhler, who 
whom he would appreciate during his entire life as friend and colleague. Simultaneously, though, he recalls also unpleasant exercises or useless ones which he has been able to tolerate at best and which he tells us about his students in Göttingen. There is, for example, the method of the so-called syllabizing through which he himself learns to read which he could only tolerate. How does he describe it? We can summarize his words like this. It means to collect letters and syllables. We, when we were young children, attacked each other to discuss the word Constantinopolitanus in such a way that someone had to arrange the syllables, but so that as often as he has set up a new syllable, had to repeat all the preceding ones again, even at one time forwards and another time back. This method of syllabizing at primary school was bearable because it was just one word. Here Gessner explains, a young boy who starts reading firstly collects the single letters and he combines them and makes up words. After this, he can certainly pronounce one word after another slowly. Gradually, he reads more quickly. Finally, he succeeds in reading as fast as possible and in pronouncing as quickly as he can move his tongue. However, I acquired such a condition that I could get to know the entire period at one glance. It is probable because of this that he indirectly warned his students against this method. However, he was focusing hard on his aims because he learned reading by experience diuturna exercitatione and in his enthusiasm. He stresses this fact also in the conjunction set, but he really describes a reading process including real-time comprehension. So this is what he tells us later. From this, we can deduce his willpower and decisiveness and ambition, which he would maintain along his life, because as we know from educational research, willpower depends on four psychological systems. It is here that negative experiences in the recognition of objects are integrated, object erkennung, into the extensive memory, extensionsgedächtnis, which arises from complex encounterings with other human beings. In other words, painful acquaintances and mistakes can be put down to experience. Many emotions and life impressions are memorized here and refer to the experiences as well as to oneself. The recognition of objects affects the person rather negatively, the extensive memory only slightly negatively. Furthermore, the memory of the intentions, intentionsgedächtnis, plays a crucial role. It is responsible for the continuous striving for one's aims and is activated when difficulties and conflicts arise in the realization of the aims. Its effect is slightly positive. Finally, the intuitive management of behavior, intuitive Verhaltenssteuerung, has a positive effect and is essential continuously realizing intentions because this control is shaped by routine and automated behavior and pleasure. Referring to Gesner, this means at first that we cannot know exactly when which impression had been perceived by which psychological system. However, this is not necessary as these interdependent four systems exert mutual influence. Concerning the example of the learning process of reading, this means Gesner wanted to learn and was truly longing for it. Slightly positive affect. He studied and practiced until he was able to read fluently, positive affect. He remembered long reading procedures quite negatively, negative effect, but could incorporate this into his enthusiasm and his reading experience, slightly negative effect. So here you gained a concise insight into the methodological approach of my thesis. I will continue in this way analyzing Gesner's authentic statements and his efforts to professionalize himself as well as his solutions to overcome the crisis of Latin teaching in the 18th century. Thank you for your attention.